We're now taking you live from the Foreign Minister Penny Wong to Canberra where the Employment Minister Tony Burke is commenting on today's jobs figures. That the macroeconomists will say uh, effectively aren't matching in the way that we were told they would be. For a long time we've been told that if you had a prolonged period of low unemployment that at that moment job security would get moving and wages would get moving and yet that hasn't been what we've seen. So in the first half of the story, if this connected directly in terms of wages and job security, then this would be a uniformly good story because in terms of labour force uh, numbers, they are good. We've had an increase in seasonally adjusted employment by 60,600 in May. Importantly here, even though part-time employment decreased by 8,700, full-time employment increased by much more than that. So while part-time's gone backwards, 8,700, full-time employment has increased 69,400. Similarly, against the backdrop, uh, the unemployment rate itself has been unchanged, but the participation rate has been improving. So at a time where we've had an increase in, the, in immigration, again, with the, the borders reopening, uh, and the number of people arriving in the workforce increasing, notwithstanding that participation has continued to increase. So there is no argument at the moment that in any way immigration is displacing Australians from work. We've had an increase uh, participation rate of 0.3 percentage points over the course of the month. Uh, similarly, and a figure uh, that we, we watch closely is the underemployment rate. The underemployment rate has fallen by 0.4 percentage points over the month uh, to 5.7 per cent. And in terms of the gender disparity, uh, you, you still have a gap here between men and women, but underemployment is improving faster for women than it is for men. So for women, the underemployment figure has gone from 7.4 to 6.9. For men, it's gone from 5.0 to 4.7. So the gap is narrowing there slightly. Uh, for, for young people, underemployment still high, uh, but has gone from 14.3 to 12.7. Uh, against all of that, though, these figures should, if uh, what some people like to say, uh, that, that low unemployment will automatically drive wages, uh, these figures should have already driven it. These figures if we were to believe what our opponents said throughout their entire time in office, we would not have a wage price index still at 2.4%. We would not have the highest number of people working multiple jobs since records began. We wouldn't have, similarly, the highest number of people working three or more jobs. Yesterday, we were told by some that it was the worst possible time for people on the minimum wage to be getting a 5.2% pay rise. What these figures actually show is there is no better time than now to get wages moving. There is no better time than now to be able to start actively taking steps to deliver secure jobs. The principles that would normally be there where people would say, oh, you know, is now the right time? These labour force figures say, unequivocally, yes. Now is the right time to get wages moving. Now is the right time to be moving forward on job security. You're just listening there to Tony Burke. He was commenting after we learned that the unemployment rate remains steady this month at 3.9 per cent, saying it justifies a decision by the Fair Work Commission yesterday, which uh, did lift yeah, the, the uh, minimum wage by some 5.2 per cent, which was more than most economists had been expecting.